what would this podcast be if we didn't touch on a topic that I know you were quite passionate about? And it, it, you actually shared this book with me, I think it was months ago. It was Fair Play <laughs> by Eve Rodsky. And this, this is fascinating to me in a sense because a lot of the work you do and a lot of like the content that you put out and a lot of the thought leadership you do in a way could, I mean, if everybody listened, could actually hurt your business, yeah. right? Because Absolutely. you're not pro-divorce. You're actually trying to you know, advocate for communication and achieving gender equality at home and the things that could <laughs> prevent divorce. Um, but Absolutely. why in, in particular, when you talk about fair play, I know there's the book, um, it, there recently the documentary came out. Uh, why in, in particular are you so passionate about this? I just think fair play is I mean, it is the thing, the missing link we have had in our culture of helping couples be able to communicate in a way that especially men are going to be able to hear it because so many men, and I know that's stereotypical, but it just is the reality. The statistics bear out my stereotypicalness um, that they don't understand all the work behind the scenes and all that mental load that women are mostly doing. And when you look at the card game that's part of fair play and realize there's a hundred cards involved in running a family, like just a typical family, 40 of those cards are kid related. Most men could come up with like six or eight of those if you just ask them, you know, what do you need to do? They'd be like, you need to bring them to the doctor, bring them to the dentist, you know, get them to soccer practice. And they don't realize all the behind the scene, the finding the pediatrician, calling the insurance company, making sure you have a PPO versus an HSA, making sure that, you know, you don't need a referral to go to a specialist, making sure that if they join the soccer team, you've signed them up to get their health forms filled out. You brought them to the physical. You got the coach's gift. You signed up for the email list. You got a carpool. You found out, you know, what they needed to do skill wise to be able to join this particular team. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and so many families break up over this. I mean, and because women cannot do it all, the the stats are alarming at how much the mental load that women have is harming their performance at work. I mean, their brains are literally not able to do all this mental load and then, you know, manage their husband too and keep up with whatever. And then supposed to go to work and, you know, work at high powered lawyer, doctor jobs. It's impossible. And it's just, we look at men leaders and so many of them have stay at home wives. And I mean, it's a totally different ball game if you have a stay at home wife. I mean, I was both a stay at home wife, a business owner. I know what it looks like when you have a competent human at home running all the things like, it is complete. You can go to work and really just, I mean, do big, huge things. But if people don't have that, I mean, we have to figure out how to share this more equitably because women are being put behind in work environments and in their home constantly. And it is, in my mind, it is a public health crisis for children. Children are being harmed by how our society is working. And fair play actually puts a system on it. We all talk about our works and our offices and how we have to have operational systems and SOPs and we need to do this. Yet our most important group is our family and we don't have a system in our family. That's nonsense. Like, of course we need a system in our family. And of course we need shared vocabulary. And one of the things about Fair Play that's so wonderful is it encourages you to share your why. So like, let's say you have a woman who's like wrapped around the axle about taking the garbage out every day. And the husband is thinking to himself, this woman is flipping crazy about the garbage. Like, I do not understand it. She might be like, came from a single mom home where every time she walked into the kitchen, when she was little, there were roaches because there was garbage around and there was bugs. It might bring up all this shame and this financial story she's living under. When you go through the cards as a couple and you talk about your why and you really explain why this might matter to you, it literally completely changes your desire to want to do the thing and help each other get the work done. I mean, and if, and if it doesn't, you're probably not, shouldn't be married in the first place. Like if people's deep seated whys don't move you, then, you know, there's probably a bigger problem. And maybe you do need to come talk to me at that point. But um, ideally, I could rid the world of divorce. And yeah, I'll figure out something else to do.
I assure you. I'll figure it out. Well, it, it, and look, it's it's no secret that I think the majority of the legal profession, at least a lot of the firm owners, are are still primarily male. I imagine many of the listeners of this podcast are male. And when when they hear things like this, I imagine some could be taken aback or even taken taken offense or, or what have you. But uh, I'd love for you to share kind of what's the end goal of all this, because ultimately uh, this is really about making sure that if, you know, if, if everything is done right at home and if people feel supported and they're happy at home, that reflects to other aspects of their life. So before all the and start feeling like, man, I'm, I'm not doing enough. And why, you know, is this really my problem? Or I feel like I work really hard at the office and all those things. It's like, what, what are you really saying here? Uh, more sex, like a happier life. Your whole life looks better. And most importantly, like one of the most profound things when I watched the documentary, Eve's husband, Seth, is just amazing. He literally, you watch his transformation through the documentary. I mean, and she, I mean, tells some hilarious stories, you know, about Seth. And, and I mean, Seth's got a big, huge job. He's a big, big earner, you know, doing his thing. But he talks about the real power of what his buy-in has been to his marriage and what his buy-in is for his children. And I mean, he's got two sons and one's like, you know, 14-ish kind of age this child is watching before his eyes, his father step into his role at home. It will, it will change an entire family because of this. I mean, our entire society needs to change. And no doubt there's a lot of male, you know, firm owners and they might, you know, think, this is really hard or whatever. I mean, one, I mean, so much of the work can be delegated. Like, you know, it's not like you have to step in and, you know, manage all the soccer team stuff. Like, but you have to understand that, you know, your wife can't do it all. Like it is impossible to do it successfully. And like I've said before, resentment and desire do not live in a heart. If you want a happy wife who wants to have sex with you on the regular, figure out how to get rid of all that resentment. Because the two don't live together well. 